Hello and welcome to the Tournament Center. I'm Randy Bueller here with Brian David Marshall. Hot off the printer, we have the final standings after 14 rounds of Swiss at Pro Tour San Diego. The cut to four has happened, and all alone in first place, one of Magic's great players. Yeah, it's, it's the return of Eugene Harvey. Uh, before there was a Pro Tour Players Club, it was called the Gravy Train. Eugene was one of the most feared riders on the Gravy Train. Absolutely. Uh, he's the guy responsible for launching the dreaded Target team. That's he right. was a New Jersey player. He went to Carnegie CMU, Mellon University. Carnegie Mellon. He was the crossover. A CMU player, brought CMU and Target together. That's right. Really infected those guys with really good play, top notch decks, and he was just a formidable CMU player. CMU was all right before he got there. No, Come no, on. he infected Target. Absolutely. That's totally Absolutely. fair. Absolutely. Totally fair. And, he, and he's just a top notch player. He has Three top eights. He's got went, four now. He's got four now. He went away. He went away. He was got a yeah, music he took career. Kind of a break for the game. He's a you know he's a piano player. He was working on his graduate degree. He was playing some other games. He's come back to Magic. He's got the fever. He, he said, he's totally got the I, fever. As again. soon as as soon as he won, I you know walked up to him and he's like, you don't know how bad I wanted this. That's awesome. And you know that's, that's well you really love to hear that from the game's great players. Yeah. And uh, played with John Fiorello, another New Jersey player. They min-maxed the players' club system perfectly. Fiorello had level three. Eugene had 12 points last year for level two. They got in with like 31 points total and managed to parlay that into a Pro Tour invitation. Parlay that into a top four. They got a lot more Pro points now. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, they, he, he said they were a perfect team because yeah. Fiorello knew the draft. Oh, all right. And Harvey knew how to play. Yeah, there you go. Totally complimenting each other. Yeah. The other cool story I think in this top eight is uh, is Lachman and Von Lunen, the Sliver kids. They got it done. They had to win both rounds this morning to make the top four, and they pulled it off. They drafted Slivers, and it was spitting Slivers and synchronous Slivers, and nobody could stop them. So hats off to them. Hats off to them. You, you cover enough events, you start to develop an instinct for these things. <laughs> and after round three, uh, Van Lunen came up to me. Oh, the six variant and, sliver. And he said, yeah, I, I did it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm known for my love of a sliver, but he's like, I did it. Nice. Six virulent slivers, I won on turn, I won on turn four with poison. <laughs> and you know who they poisoned? Eugene Harvey. Eugene Harvey. In round three. Yes. Oh, wow, I forgot about that. That's yeah. awesome. And, and you kind of knew something was up. You're like, wow, these guys had a plan. Yeah, they rattled. And, and, they've, and, they've, and they've implemented that plan all the way through. They rattled off six straight on day one. They put up a 3-3 three, three on day two, sort of split one and one on all three pods, on table one all three, all three times. And then the 2-0 this morning, and they're through. I've, I've, I'm not sure I've ever seen top four competitors happier. They're just beaming, wandering around, went out to get a cup of coffee. Wait, they delighted. Yeah. The rest of the top four is round outed by a couple of Japanese PTQ teams. You've got uh, Yamamoto and Takahashi, and then Kaneko and Taru. We've seen Yamamoto and Takahashi sitting on top of the standings. They were also undefeated on day one. They've been there for a while. Right. And so you, you got some information about these guys. Sure. Th these guys uh, are Tokyo players. Mm -hmm. they, they play at the local card shop in Tokyo with sure. Naoki Shimizu, who's okay. doing some coverage for us. Uh, this this is weekend. a solar flare guy, Solar right? flare guy. This is, this is a young group of Japanese players okay. who are coming up through university. Uh, we've seen them, you know, Gazi Glare, Solar Flare, not necessarily these guys, but this same but this crowd. crowd. This, this crowd, this crowd, the college student. And so these are, this is the college student crowd from Japan. This yeah. is, these guys are probably next. It's been the running joke all weekend. I never right. heard of these guys. Probably means they're going to put up, you know, three top right. eights in Ka the next three years. Kaneko is, is friends with Mori and Asahara. Okay. He's, he's somewhat connected. Uh, and Taru, well, Taru. Now, this, this is a guy from Prague, right? Yeah, he has a 12th place finish at Prague. That's, that's legit. Yeah. So this is, you know, he's been here before and he's, you know, I'm sure this was a real vindication for him to break through into the top four right now. Sure. Meanwhile, sitting in fifth place, missing the final day on tiebreakers, Kenji Sumura. Kenji rattled off six wins in a row. They went 4-2 day one. They were sitting 5-3 after the first pot on day two. They haven't lost since, but 11-3 was not good enough to get it done. Those early losses came back to haunt them. They just did not have the tiebreakers that the Sliver kids had. And so Kenji comes up just short of top eight number, what, 17 or something? <laughs> It's funny. I, I honestly think, I remember at Worlds, we were talking about Gabe Nassif as having finally established himself as the clear number three behind John and Kai. I think that may have been the shortest reign of any sort of, you I think, know, I top think we're, guy. I think we're expanding, we're expanding the field a little bit. Uh, Ken, Kenji is, Kenji's awesome. He's got this aura about him. He plays with this joy. Everybody wants to know how he's doing. Everybody wants to say hello. Everybody loves this guy. And he keeps playing and he keeps winning. Six wins, not quite good enough. So he gets a fifth place finish. He wins like 14 grand, which is perfect perfectly reasonable, eight pro points, which is very important. And we've been talking about the player of the year race all uh, all weekend. All that work for Kenji, he picks up one point on Saito. Saito. One point on Saito could be huge. It could be. Kaji the way is, these guys have been 
neck and neck. Yeah, Kaji and Saito put up a 1 1 this morning. They wound up in 10th place. So Kenji gets eight points. Saito gets seven points. That, Kenji breaks the tie. He's into the lead. But that race is going to be tight with a Pro Tour and a bunch of Grand Prix and Worlds. Absolutely. Nobody, you know, the two of them put some distance between them and the rest of the field, but certainly no distance between each other. So no, no actual top eight, but a virtual top eight for Kenji. There you go. So that's kind of the story here. We're now going to go take a lunch break. If you're, if you're watching this live, tune in. You can watch the top eight draft at 2.15, 2.15 Pacific Coast time. If you're not watching this live, and maybe the archives are probably up by now, go check it out. <laughs> Should be a fun one. Eugene Harvey, the Sliver Kids, the next generation of Japanese college students. Should be fun. For Brian David Marshall, this is Randy Bueller. We will see you momentarily. On Saturday, July 14th, Magic Game Day is coming to a store near you. And just by showing up, you can get exclusive cards, participate in exciting leagues and tournaments, and enter one-time contests and sweepstakes. For more information on game days in your area, go to www.wizards.com slash magicgameday.